Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 2021 graduates, graduates, if you have someone that is a member of St. Matthew's graduating this year from middle school, high school, college, etc., please send that information to the office so we can recognize them. Pastor's Bible study is on Thursday at 10 a.m. by conference call. Home communion will be delivered May 16th. Please prearrange this by contacting Pastor. Sunday school is today at 11 a.m. by Zoom. A high school leadership camp is being offered by LOMC July 11th through 16th. A middle school summer camp is being offered for 6th through 8th graders, which is also through LOMC, which is being held June 13th through 16th and then July 25th through 28th. There are camperships available for these activities. You just need to contact Pastor or myself if you are interested or need more details. LOMC is also offering a household getaway. More details can be found in your bulletin or online on LOMC.org. Thank you guys, and happy Mother's Day. And happy Mother's Day. And a couple that I would add is we are in need of people to sign up for mowing and trimming and stuff. There's a sign-up sheet outside the offices there, kind of on the corner, so please consider helping do that. And, and we've had... We've had new people jump in, thank you. It looks good. Um, so just know that that is part of what you can do to help keep the church going. The other thing is just know that next week when we serve communion, and it's gonna, we'll explain more details next week, we'll still offer the self-contained packets upstairs and downstairs. That's, we will not, that's all we'll have served downstairs are the self-contained packets. But um, up front, you'll be able to, in the middle of the service, come forward to get either wine or grape juice, and we'll ha we have it designed so that um, um, you can get the little cup with either wine or grape juice and someone will have to put it on a table for you to pick up off the table so that we're not bumping the next person's cup. So just know that we thought this through and we want to start offering that. So explain that a little more next week. The other thing I do want to bring up just so you know as we're recording these and we're plan the plan is to continue recording these because we have people who um, for various reasons want to continue to get these met, um, services. Um, Right before the pandemic hit, with some Georgia Fay estate money, we had a dream to put in microphones above the belts to, rather than have these up front here that were hand on the stands. And there is one that's kind of right above where, you see it right there in the middle, hanging from the ceiling, kind of close to um, Wendell and Pam, right there in the middle. Just know that picks up very, very well. So if you don't like something I say in the sermon, I will hear that later. <laughs> we, we, we do try to shut it down when we're not using it for congregational responses, but no, it will pick up your walking down the aisle. I, just, I didn't want anybody to be embarrassed later on. Okay, I, I love you all. Yes? Yes, we're gonna need some communion helpers. From, from this point on, we need two communion assistants, Barb is reminding me. So please note that um, if you will be willing to help do that, you'll need to wear masks and gloves to do that, but um, we do starting next week. So, And your leadership has been working on, with a couple of different committees, all that we think we need to do, and we had a lot of discussions, that'll be in a letter you get. And so it isn't just something that's shooting from the hip, but it's been in a process probably for about six weeks now. So with that, no more announcements. Um, I invite you then to turn to page four in the bulletin for the confession and forgiveness, and I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, 
Forgive me all my sins and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 10, 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard that them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they, stayed, then they invited him to stay for several days. Our psalm for today is number 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of, the, of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Our second reading is from 1 John chapter 5, 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Here ends our reading. I invite you to stand for the Holy Gospel as it's found in the um, 15th chapter of John. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because servants, the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and um, children, please remain in your seats and invite Sandy to come up front and share the, the children's sermon. Can I, 
Good morning. I'm glad everyone's here on this lovely rainy day. All right. Well, rules help a family live together, right? Right? Well, I have a bunch of rules that I wrote out that, are, that can be kind of like family rules to help families to work together. You know, make your bed, clean your room, do your homework, say your prayers, don't miss church, say please and thank you. That's a big one for me. Don't fight with your brothers or sisters. <laughs> and wash dishes. Are those some family rules that maybe some of you might have or I've had? You're kind of shaking, maybe. Jackson's back there shaking his head, I can tell. Yeah, well, those are some word, those are rules that, you know, help us encourage and then support our families and help us to be together. Well, Jesus has a rule about family, a family of faith, and I wrote it on the other side. And it says, love one another as I have loved you. So Jesus' love is very special. When Jesus saw that someone had a need, he sought to meet it. When Jesus met someone not accepted by others, he would invite them to be part of God's family. Jesus cared for all people. His love is so special that he's always willing to forgive. So Jesus, he encouraged and supported people. When we love as Jesus loved, we encourage, we support, we forgive, and we invite all people to become part of God's family. Out of love for us, Jesus gave his life so that we might have life in God's family. So Jesus' love is so great that without Jesus, we can't even begin to love with his love. So make Jesus a part of everything you do at home, at church, or everywhere you go. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Jesus, you invite us to love you as you have loved us. We know that apart from you, we can't love as you love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, happy Mother's Day, and um, to all the mothering people in my life, I say thank you. For the love of God is this, that we obey God's commandments. The Ten Commandments still speak to us today. They're not just a bunch of stuffy thou shalt nots. Not. They're given to us in love by God. Yet those ten biblical laws that point a finger at us often can sometimes say, ah, 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 don't do that. Those pesky thou shalt nots often condemn us. With this in mind, we Lutherans often talk about law and gospel. In seminary, they told us that pastors are, um, when they share a good sermon, I hope they're all good, but a good sermon will have both a little law and gospel, but also should share about God's love and grace. The law or the commandments tell us how we sin, what we've done wrong or forgot to do. Then the gospel tells us how on the cross, Jesus paid the debt of our sins. That means we're now forgiven and promised heaven. That is why we call it good news. It speaks to God's love rather than some condemning wrath that we fear. Maybe I ch should say, the wrath of God we often take for granted just might be possible. No wonder we prefer to hear the gospel over the commanding law. Just like any child in the care of a parent, we like to feel loved, not scolded. 
like any citizen caught by a traffic cop. We like to hear the police officer say, I'll give you a warning this time. I've always liked those words over the few times I've actually gotten a traffic ticket. Let's face it. We all prefer and like to experience grace and love. We come here to worship God and to hear about God's grace and love. Then we hear a Bible verse like in our second lesson today that says, for the love of God is this, that we obey His commandments. Love and thou shalt not together. How can law be filled with gospel? That's where the verse continues. For the love of God is this, that we obey His commandments, and God's commandments are not burdensome. Rules, do they produce love? Well, believe it or not, I do remember a few events from when I was age four, which makes for a good story on Mother's Day, that speaks of parental love that includes discipline, that help me understand how rules are given to us in love to protect us from harm and also to protect others from us. This story is when we lived in Macomb, Illinois for a few years. We lived on a busy street that was a main thoroughfare to the hospital and at the other end of the street, several blocks away, was a grocery store along a busy highway. On foot, it would be like us taking off from here at St. Matthew's and walking to Sullivan's, distance-wise and traffic-wise. Okay? Keep that in mind. As a four-year-old, I was in the backyard playing. Mom had only taken her eyes off me briefly to change my baby sister's diaper. In that brief moment, on my own, I decided to take a journey down the sidewalk with my Radio Flyer red wagon to that grocery store without my mom's knowledge. The toy section was what was in my mind, and it was loaded with cherished desires like we had in our prayer this morning. So on my return journey home, my mom met me halfway. I could not wait to tell her about all the toys I had seen, but after frantically searching for me, that's not quite what she had on her mind. You have to also realize this was the same neighborhood from which one of my four-year-old playmates had been fatally hit by a car. So in fear, but rooted in love, my mother took a dish shop towel and strapped me in a high chair for a... She says it was a long time. And I remember kicking and screaming. It was a long sit in that chair. My mom says it was so long that today she admits she has some feelings of guilt. But she did not want me to forget the rule. I was to never again walk to that grocery store by myself. I never forgot it, and I remember it today. That's why I drive to the grocery store. It's amazing. I am able to walk into a grocery store today without any pangs of guilt and without any latent fear of parental discipline. That's because today I know the rule was enforced in love. It was as if, even as a child, I understood the words of Jesus who said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. In John's gospel, this verse comes shortly after the words, abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. This Bible verse was embedded in last week's sermon that also concluded with part of today's gospel reading where it said, My Father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. 
As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus, who laid down his life for us on the cross, says, You are my friends. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. I'm giving you these commands that you may love one another. As our second lesson from the first letter of John says, God's commandments are not burdensome. Let's take a look at some rules given to us in love by our Heavenly Father. Number one, God is our Father and Creator, no questions asked. We don't even get a choice in that. Jesus came from the Father for us and said, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And from this commandment comes the, all the other commandments. Number two, we are to use God's name. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And that's the key, abiding in God's word. So then we know that we're asking for something in prayer that it aligns with what God's will is, not our will. Again, Jesus says, that is if we remain abiding in God's word, to know God's will, that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. In other words, we are given God's name to use in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. Which leads us to number three. We are to abide in God's word, to gather weekly to retell the good news, because God is your maker. God did set aside one day each week to be about our being in prayer and worship, but also so that you can rest for the work in the week to come. How thoughtful of God to give us a commandment that is for our benefit. All these three commandments speak of our relationship that God has established with us. And as the last seven then speak about our relationship with each other. These earthly relationships are to be rooted in God's love and founded upon the healthy parental relationship with God. Therefore, especially on Mother's Day and later on Father's Day, it is fitting to remind ourselves that it is no accident that the next caring statement from God is to honor your father and your mother. It is a direct move from your relationship with God to your relationship with other people. Listen to this. This comes from Luther's large catechism. Honor, servanthood, love, and respect all begin in the home under the guidance of parents as designed by God. It is from the home life that God intends, and Luther acknowledged it doesn't always happen there, and then it becomes our responsibility as, as people of God. That children should learn to respect, love, obey, serve, and honor. This is the catch. Others in authority. Luther puts that first. And then to respect and love our neighbors, friends, and family. In fact, this is the first commandment with a promise that you may have a long life in the land where you dwell. This means to not merely live to an old age, but to have everything that pertains to long life, like health, family, livelihood, peace, etc. And Luther in that large catechism talks about how without these, this life can neither be, neither be heartily enjoyed nor long endured. For God does want you to have a full life. Otherwise, why would God prohibit murder in the fifth commandment? God wants you to live. It's because God does want you to live and asks that we help and support each other. And remember who Jesus said each other, our neighbor, is anybody, even those we don't like. 
We are to help each other in our needs to sustain life. God wants you and your neighbor to have life. Then there is the sixth rule where God holds marriage in high esteem. God does desire we live long lives together as spouses, but Jesus said there's the human heart that gets involved sometimes. But God does want to spare us from the heartache of broken marriages. God wishes that we could be spared that pain. God desires that marriage instead adds blessings to your life as a God-pleasing estate. Then there's the seventh part of the law, where God wants you to maintain the gifts that God has given you. Everything you have is a gift from God. You don't get to take it with you, do you? It's given to you to use in this lifetime and to share. God doesn't want it stolen from you, though. God does not wish to see these taken from you dishonestly or even through deceptive and sometimes called legal maneuvers. That's why God wants us to stand in defense of those whose property or livelihood are being stolen or swindled from them. You think the small catechism is a hard read. You ought to read the large catechism. Then in the Eighth Commandment, God wants you to retain your good name, that your reputation not be taken from you nor from your neighbor. In fact, in discussing this commandment, Martin Luther said something like this. And this is in from the large catechism. When you become aware of another person's sin, simply make your ear a tomb and bury it. Until called to testify in court. In other words, even if it is true, God does not want gossip to deprive you or your neighbor of a good name. Then there are the ninth and tenth, where God wants, again, for you to keep what is entrusted to you by God. God wants you to protect you from other people desiring and covenanting to get their hands on your farm or property or spouse or loyal employees. These are under your care and should not be enticed away from you or from others by you or someone else. You realize that we just covered the Ten Commandments without ever using the phrase, thou shalt not. That's because these commandments are not burdensome for those who are living in the vine. God gives these to protect you and those who are your neighbors, near and far. These commandments are rooted in God's love for you and all people. These are rooted in law and gospel, but also share God's grace and love. Jesus knew this well, saying, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. That is to put the needs of the other person ahead of your own. It's hard for us to do sometimes. With these commandments, God shows care, concern, and love for you and you and you and you. I guess you could say Jesus is your eternally loyal, loving friend who loves you unconditionally no matter what. So then, with whom do you share such friendship and love? Jesus says, filled with the Holy Spirit, go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Amen. I invite you to turn to page 7 as we confess the Apostles' Creed. 
Right, please remain seated. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to stand as we um, join in the prayers of the church. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Work through the ministry of your people, especially LRI Lutheran Parish, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, and Bishop Jeff Clements, and another child foundation. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea, sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join them in praise. Bless all newly baptized, especially Violet. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit, so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Caring Healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, especially Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Diane, Judy, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Paul, Elizabeth, Fran, Porter, Terry, Marilyn, Donna, Kathy, Dick, Mike, Chuck, Dana, Beth, Deborah, John, Tim, Lloyd, Nancy, Joy, Mona, Rod, Samantha, Tricia, Deb, Scott, Angelica, Lori, Sally, Braden, Kendall, Karen, Ruth, Gary, Lisa, Pam, Lauren, Chris, Scott, Sharon, Loretta, Lisa, Gary, and all victims of disasters and violence and those impacted in any way by our pandemic. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us toward life-changing responses to these needs in our own communities. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in the never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the um, great thanksgiving on page 10. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right or duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name in song.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, I'm hoping this is the last time I push the cart down the aisle. <laughs> Just keep in mind, we will still offer those self-contained packets for next, starting next week for those who want them. So I look forward to communion next week, okay? Just know that. But it's still the body and blood of Christ. Christ is still coming to us. Um, the early church fathers said even the most undisciplined, really priest or pastor can't mess up communion because it's God's work, okay? So remember that. So... Plastic first, for the wafer foil second, and if you prefer to take these home, we understand that. Next week you can commune up front if you'd like, and as we have done sim very similar in the past. It'll be slightly modified, but it'll be very close to what we've done before. Receive this benediction. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.